Well, welcome back class. This is Professor Krauss and today we are looking uh, at how we can um, develop relevant expository messages from uh, the, pre the wisdom literature. Uh, it is often an overlooked section of scripture. It can be very, very challenging at times, but hopefully the lecture that we go through today will be helpful and encouraging to you as you seek to um, craft these messages. So let's um, open in prayer and then we'll jump in. Father, thank you for all of um, these many blessings, including being able to study and being able to read these uh, great books that help us to better understand uh, the, the task that you've called us to. Uh, and we thank you for uh, just the opportunity to preach your word. And we pray for your help in understanding how to do that in a way that glorifies you and builds up your people. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, preaching wisdom literature. So one of the uh, really cool things about the Bible is there are certain themes that run through it from beginning to end. You know, for example, page one You've got creation. The very last page of the Bible, you've got like the new heavens, the new earth, the new creation. And one of those great themes is the wise man or the wise woman. The authors give examples of what it means to be wise versus what it means to be a fool. Uh, and on top of that, Scripture also gives us instructions about how we can uh, throw off the foolish man and to be wise. Um, so not only is wisdom an important theme... Um, it's actually a very specific type of literature. Some of the the books that we find in God's Word focus, you know, primarily on being wise in the world that we are living in. And so, even though it's often overlooked as a genre in Scripture, it is one of the most practical uh, places in Scripture that we find because you know it it kind of touches on all the ins and outs of living in God's creation. And the truth is, um, wisdom literature really does connect to every single aspect of our lives in ways that other um, uh, genres of Scripture don't do as specifically. So, you know, the Bible um, applies wisdom uh, in these in in the wisdom literature to the way we spend our money, health, godliness, relationships, speech, uh, pleasure. Um, uh, trial, suffering, and, and that covers so much of our, our lives. And so the wisdom literature is a great place to preach from because you're going to have people who immediately find those takeaways that they can apply to their life. So, um, you know, right off the bat, in, in Psalm chapter 1, uh, you know, it's really, it's often seen as, you know, like the prologue to the rest of the Psalms because it talks us about, talks about the ways of the wicked versus the ways of the wise or the blessed man. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, on, and on his law he meditates day and night. He's like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and all that he does he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind uh, drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. You know, if this is your text that you are beginning to study um, and to interpret, you're looking for ways to explain the main truths and illustrate some of these ideas um, and apply it. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's all there right there for you. Um, there's so many rich illustrations, a tree planted by streams of water, even the opening section about the blessed man not, you know, not walking with a certain group or standing with a certain group or sitting with a certain group. It is it, such a, a rich place to preach from. Uh, it, it touches on how to avoid sin, um, the importance of God's word in our life what it means to be well watered or connected to God's word yields this in our life, how we avoid judgment. I mean, this is the picture of the wise or the blessed man versus the foolish um, in, in wisdom literature. Um, but wisdom literature is more than just you know these rules that we find that we need to follow in order to be wise. Because wisdom literature functions primarily as 
observations and guidelines for living in God's world. So understanding that wisdom, what liter- wisdom literature is and is not, turns out to be the key to be able to develop sermons from it and to preach them. Because if we see wisdom literature as promises from God, then we are going to um, you know, preach it in such a way that this genre in and of itself doesn't justify. Um, you know, for example, you've got, you know, Proverbs 22, 6. It's, uh, you know, a well-known proverb. Um, it says, train up a child in the way he should go, and even when he's old, he will not depart from it. And we know good and well that there are godly families who have raised their family, their children in godly homes, and they've raised them up in the Lord, and yet when they got to later on in life, they went away from the Lord. So to preach that as a promise, you have people who want to scratch their head like, well, wait a second, God's word lies. But if you preach it as a proverb, um, not as a rule, but more of as an observation about how the wise family raises their children, the wise child continues in the ways of the Lord, then all of a sudden you are, you're making some headway. You're going to be able to preach some really good, um, relevant, uh, godly sermons from these passages. So we need to make sure that we are not just preaching it as a bunch of you know, wise sayings, you know, you can take this or leave it. But more to say, you know, this is what God wants for us. If we want freedom in Christ, if we want righteousness, if we want blessing in life, um, then this is the way that we need to live our lives. Um, You know, interpreting wisdom literature, um, some include like the Psalms, but we've already covered the Psalms and the poetry. So we're going to think of it more of like Proverbs, Song of Solomon, Job, and Ecclesiastes as the, the centerpiece of what we're talking about today. And, and throughout this wisdom literature, you're going to find different types of genres within this genre. You're going to find you know Proverbs, you're going to find riddles, you're going to find instructions, and even some narrative. They all function within the overall picture of wisdom literature. But understanding the overarching direction of wisdom literature helps us when we come to Proverbs or riddles or instructions or law or narrative. You know, uh, we've already talked about, you know, what is a proverb, a catchy, concise couplet that clearly captures a crucial concept. I mean, that's That's alliteration, some of the best I've ever seen. Um, And the cool thing is all cultures have different proverbs. But the proverbs in the Bible are what help us to see what a godly life looks like. Um, You know, the marks of proverbs, uh, they're authoritative. So they're not just suggestions, but they're telling us how we should live um, as, as as God's children. They vary, so it's not just, you know, the the proverbs all look this way or sound this way or all focus on this they they're all over the place um they are very true to experience um you know the readers and hearers when you preach these are going to understand um you know they're going to recognize them as proverbs because they they tap into life experiences um, they also, which is really cool and gives you a great platform to preach from, they invite analysis. So it's not just about making a statement, you know, like a proverb. Let me see. I'm just going to grab one here. Uh, Proverbs chap, uh, chapter 20, verse 9. Um, Who can say, I have made my heart pure, I am clean from my sin? Um, you know, and that, that gives us analysis, because in our world, you know, if someone says they do not have sin, First John says they're a liar. So who can come before the Lord and say, I am pure, I have not sinned? Well, you know, at, at first glance, you know, we'd say, well, none of us can because all of us are sinners. And yet this invites analysis. Why? Because those who are in the Lord, those who are in Christ are righteous. So in one sense, we can go before the Lord and say we have been cleansed of our sin. So, you know, there, there's depth to these Proverbs. You've got great rich imagery, which we've already talked about before, which help us to preach. Uh, general truths, not certain promises. Uh, the great thing about Proverbs too is they ask questions. So the person who is there seeking after truth, seeking after direction in their life, the Proverbs are going to give them some interesting questions that they need to ask of themselves. Um, it's going to help them to dig deep into their life and the way they are living. Um, 
They also help us to preach a high view of God because one of the main defining marks of wisdom literature is the fear of the Lord. It is reverence to God as our our sovereign ruler over all creation so that, hey, God is watching our lives and our lives matter. Therefore, we should live in the fear of the Lord because it's the beginning of wisdom. Uh, It helps us to talk through life. Uh, As we've already said, uh, it touches on all aspects of life, the the ups, the downs, the mistakes, the successes. Uh, it, It talks about grace. Uh, and so all of this is under that umbrella of wisdom literature. Now, one of the challenges of preaching Proverbs or Ecclesiastes or uh, a Song of Solomon is finding your structure. It really pays off at the very beginning of preaching through wisdom literature to understand the structure of a passage. Because especially with Proverbs, you know, just to preach one chapter a Sunday is going to be pure chaos. Because in depending on where you're at in Proverbs, you might have one common theme or you might have 23 different themes. Um, and so, yeah, they may all be connected to the wise life, but how are you going to preach 21 different sermons within one sermon because there are 21 uh, Proverbs of wisdom? So find your structure um, and then give them steps. Help people know what is the next step to take. Help them to be able to look inside, see their own life, whether they're living the wise life or not. And then, okay, if you're not, then this is how you can proceed. People like steps and and God you know, can certainly use a sermon that points to truth and then gives people steps to respond. And then, as much as we want to tell them, hey, go do this, this, and this, we've also got to remind them of the gospel, which is our assurance that we are no longer condemned because we have failed, but also our motivation to continue pursuing godliness. Because of what Jesus has done, we obey, not to earn his love, but to to live the life that he died so that we could live. Uh, tell and show, show while you tell, so use your imagination, use the imagery, paint that picture they can see, um, back up story, stories, illustrate your proverbs. You know, it's going to give you examples from people who are cheats, uh, people who are adulterers, people who um, do not raise their kids the right way. There's all these practical life stories. Back them up with real stories so that people can actually picture what you're talking about. And that's not just proverbs. That's in you know Song of Solomon, um, Ecclesiastes, all these. Um, and and the captive to Christ is is important uh, because. The wisdom literature helps us to see how to live a wise life. But um, we've got to remember that a, a huge battle um, for living wi- uh, the, the, a life of wisdom is taking every thought captive to Christ. So talk about what it means to live a life and to take every thought, take every action captive to Christ. Christ is Lord, therefore, this is how I am, this is why I'm going to live this way. This is, you know, like the Song of Solomon and the way it uh, puts forth this, this love. That's how, that's, that's how I want to live because of what Christ has done. Or Job, this is how I'm going to respond to suffering because of what Christ has done. And, and that applies to all of wisdom literature. Um, you know, we live in a world that just bombards us left and right with different messages. Uh, and advice on living. So, you know, let's say you're preaching through Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, you know, helps us to see that there's nothing here on earth that's going to satisfy us apart from our relationship with God. If you've got all the money in the world, all the wisdom, all the the relationships, all the pleasure, outside of God, it's all meaningless. And yet our world is literally telling us that these are the things you should pursue. Pursue the American dream so that you can finally arrive and be important and actually matter. But the wisdom literature shows us that's not the way it's to be. The blessed life is not the American dream. Uh, the blessed life is living in right relationship with God and His creation. Therefore, as the world is bombarding us with these messages and how we should live, the wisdom literature is helping us to see that it's all false. Therefore, when, when you are sitting down and you are beginning to work on your sermon from Psalms, Proverbs, Song of Solomon, Job, Ecclesiastes, start asking those life questions. How does what I'm learning today 
uh, contradict the messages that my people are hearing uh, day after day. You know, if our people are not regularly in God's Word each day, then they're hearing these outside messages a lot more than they're hearing God's Word. So we've got to get straight to the point and help them to see the battle that's taken place and help them to understand to choose uh, to make the right decisions. Um, so this was a you know kind of a quick overview of the wisdom literature. You're going to be reading about it in uh, the beauty and power of biblical exposition. There's a lot of common themes to the books in wisdom literature. There's also some varying themes from Ecclesiastes to Job and you know even the Proverbs. Uh, so you know take your time, study hard. Find the structure, draw, explain it well, use vivid illustrations, and, and go straight to the heart and, and mind with those applications so that people know how they can live the, the life of wisdom. Uh, thank you for your attention. Um, with a very difficult uh, genre to preach sometimes. I hope that there were some good and positive tips in here for you to think through some of the things that wisdom literature is and isn't. Um, but if you have any feedback, please feel free to reach out. Um, and if not, then I will uh, see you at the next lecture. God bless.